Father, we want to say thank you. We worship and adore you. We exalt and magnify your holy name. We declare that you are our God. You are our Father. You are the reason for our living. You are the hope that we have in the land of the living. You are the anchor of our souls. We worship and adore you. We return all the glory unto you. And we humble ourselves, O God, before you tonight. That your word will have a thorough cause in our lives. That that which you have intended for our lives will be fully accomplished through us. No man will take our place. Your name shall be eternally glorified in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Okay, I welcome you to this Power for Living service on this 31st day of the month of May in the year of our Lord 2022. And this evening, we shall be exalting ourselves on what I have titled A Call to the Life of Impact. A call to the life of impact. My prayer for you is that your life will count unto Jesus. That all the days of your life, heaven will reckon with you. There will be no day of your life that you will be irrelevant to heaven. You will not be earthly relevant and heavenly irrelevant. In the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's turn in our Bibles to John chapter 12, verse 24. The gospel according to St. John, chapter 12, verse 24. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Your life will be fruitful in Jesus' name. I said your life will be fruitful in Jesus' name. You know, life on this side of eternity has a terminal end. In the book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 3, let's look at that scripture. There is a profound statement that God made after the fall of man. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. You see, that means the plan of God originally was that man was to live forever. But when the fall happened, the enemy of your soul, the one who wanted to distract your attention from the reason why God created you, when he showed up in the garden, he caused a terminal end for, or a cessation of the existence of man on earth. Praise the name of the Lord. So, for that time that God said for us to live on this earth, from that period, you will notice that God has a purpose for every life. God did not just create man for nothing. If you look at the original plan of God for mankind, he said, let us make man in our image and after, his, after our likeness, that they may have dominion over the fish of the sea. God already had a plan for the man he created. So he has a set up plan, goal, purpose for that man to pursue on this earth. Praise the name of the Lord. So the intention of God is that your life will fulfill that purpose. And my prayer for you is that that life will fulfill that purpose. So every given life is for a purpose. And the giver of life expects a return from the investment he made in our lives. The one who gave us life, he expects a return from our own lives. He did not just create you as an accidental discharge into this world. He created you for a purpose. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, let's look at it. 
He said, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. So there is a time set for our lives and there is a purpose set for that time. A time to be born and a time to die and a time to plant and a time to pluck all that which is planted. Praise the name of the Lord. So God, you can see from this, God has a purpose for our lives. And that is why I'm making this clarion call to every one of us that we should rise up to the life of impact. It should not be left. The Bible said God gave the word. Great is the company of them that publish it. God did not want only one life. If Jesus Christ has allowed the thing to remain with him, you and I may not be here today. And if God has not raised his servant, Dr. Mike Okonkwo, who led every other thing and began to pursue this cause, you and I may not have known each other. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's very important that when God raises a man for his, for a generation, for the people that God sent him to, God expects that everyone should rise up to make impact through the life of that vessel. Praise the name of the Lord. You can also see in the book of Matthew chapter 25, you, you see that God is an investor. In verse 14 to 19, let's look at that scripture. Matthew 25 from verse 14. So for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man, according to his several abilities, straightforward and straightway took his journey. Next verse. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made other five talents. Next verse. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his lost money. Last verse. And a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reconnect with them. Praise the name of the Lord. So that means the duration of the life that the master has set for us, there will be a time of reckoning. A time that he will say, my son, my daughter, the investment that I have in you, what have you done with it? Are you looking at brother A or sister B concerning him or her showing and showcasing, showcasing the talent that God has invested in him or her. And you sit down doing nothing and not getting in the mix. That is not the intention of God. God is expecting return from our lives. God will receive return from your life. Your life will count unto God in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So apart from the fact that there is a purpose attached to life. You will understand that last week the person that exhorted us in the word of the Lord, he drew our attention to the fact that the seed is the word of God. Another thing you will understand is that life is a seed. Life is a seed. That is why when I was reading to us in John chapter 12 verse 24 I made it clear to us that a seed that is not sown or planted abideth alone. That means there is no return from that seed. But supposing I gave you a seed, a seed of mango tree, and you kept it within yourself, a seed of coconut, and you kept it and did nothing with it, the, 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 the bottom line is that that seed will rot him away and nothing will come out of it. It's the same thing. God has likened the life of a man to seed. And seed is the word of God. When you look at the word of God, Jesus Christ is the word of God. The life that every one of us receive is the life of Christ. And is the seed of the word of God that gave birth. Even from the foundation of the earth, what gave birth to man, let us make man, is the word. Praise the name of the Lord. 
So the Bible said, man became a living soul after God bred the breath of no, the breath of life into his nursery. So the word produced man. The word is the life of man. Praise the name of the Lord. You will also see the same thing in Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 47. The Bible made it clear that our life is the word. And like we learned from teaching from uh, last week, from Matthew chapter 13, the Bible made it clear that the seed is the word of God. And your life is the seed. Your life is a seed. And if you don't invest that life, that life abideth alone. That life becomes of no relevance to mankind. The, the life does come, may it not happen to any one of us under the sound of my voice, that your life will just be, you pass through this world and nothing can be reckoned with, with your life. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. It shall be recorded concerning you that this man, this woman, passed this earth, and these are the things that we can say that this man or this woman imparted the world with. That will be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. So, I have said it earlier that the source of that seed, the source of that life, which is a seed, is God. And the source of any seed determines the quality of that seed. Hello? When you go to take a hybrid seed to plant as a farmer, you'll find out that the quality of the product of that seed will be better than the one that was just, you know, not upgraded, not refined. No wonder Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, say, be born again, not of corruptible seed, that means there can be a corruptible seed. Hello? Be born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. That is the source of our lives. And if Jesus is of a good quality, your life is of a good quality. If the life of Jesus made impact, your life will make impact. That is the intention of God. So you can see that, talking about life as a seed, if you travel around Lagos, you know that you notice that there are some areas you pass through in Lagos. You will see the preponderance of evil pervading that environment. Somebody invested his life in a negative way in that environment. Those, who, those, those of us who live in Lagos in Nigeria, we understand that there are some places you will go in this Lagos and you will find out that lives are just wasting away. Either people are giving over to drug addiction, people are giving over to in their hair smoking or crack smoking. And somebody was the originator of that concept. So the person has made impact in a very negative way. I remember in the late 70s, there were some places that our parents will be conscious that we don't go through. Why? Because somebody has made an indelible impact in a negative way for Satan. So that person is, a, is of the corruptible seed. But you are not of the corruptible seed. The, what made you to be a child of God is the incorruptible word of God that liveth and abideth forever. When you even look at that statement, your impact is not today and tomorrow it has ceased. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you made impact in the yesteryears, your impact should still continue until Christ will take you away from this life. Your life will never cease to be relevant in the name of Jesus Christ. So the intention of God is that your life will always find relevance as long as you have your being. That is the intention of God. That every time you live on this earth, your life is counting unto heaven. There is something that your life is adding to humanity. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I will see together. Okay, so noticing now that you, 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 you are born of incorruptible seed, then there must be a consciousness in you as a child of God. That consciousness drives you to want to emulate and to want to inquire what, what is the reason why you created me. What are your investments? What are your deposits in me? What are the things that you have invested in me that most that you are expecting return from? God will not expect return from my life in the area of singing. 
when he has graced me in the area of pastoring. So it is an anathema for a child of God to, to be watching other people shining in their own shine and not shining in your own shine. It's only failure of you know, a child who fails to look within himself or herself that will make him to think that there is nothing that he can offer. God did not create a nobody. Everyone that God created, no matter how minute the gift, the investment may be, it counts unto heaven. I've shared this story before. A man of God was preaching from nation to nation, from city to city. The man, all of a sudden, it was like things were not working the way they used to work. So the man was becoming increasingly discouraged. And there was a woman, an elderly woman, in the next city that the man was supposed to go and preach. The woman was giving to prayers and fasting. Elderly woman. So that is to tell you that even in old age, the righteous shall still continue to flourish and be bringing forth fruit. So it's because you are not conscious of the fact that there is no way God will keep a man alive for nothing. Every man that God allowed to have his breath and nose refunctioning, that man, God reckons with him. Unless, even if he's not born again, or she is not born again, God is expecting that one day, Reverend Dele Salah will go and meet that person and lead him or her to Christ. That is the way God operates. He does not want any man to die. That man, that old woman, that man, I remember my friend in uh, Kaduna State, in Nigeria. He went, he, while he was going from place to place to preach, he saw an old man that was almost near grave. The man has never heard of Christ. When he heard of Christ, he gave his life to Christ and lo and behold, immediately he said, come and baptize me. I saw, he sent me the clip of how the old man was being baptized. So that the man is old and is not yet dead. That means he's expecting Reverend Steve to go and minister grace to him. Praise the name of the Lord. He's expecting one day you will move and drag yourself to that man and preach to him or her. Praise the name of the Lord. So every life that Jesus Christ is keeping on this side of eternity is very important. There is something that God reckons with your life. That is why he said, you will not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. God is an investor. God counts on you. God is interested in what he has invested in you. He wants a return from it and he will get a return from it. The enemy will not take advantage of God in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's very important that you will understand that people who have this understanding, they know, like Jesus Christ in his days on earth, he went about doing good, healing them that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. So there is no time, like the servant of God, Bishop Michael Konko, has told us several times that God is for you. God is with you. God is in you. So if God be for you, then God is interested in what you add to humanity. He is calling you to a life of impact. Praise the name of the Lord. So I just want to share one or two things before I go to the next topic. See, a seed is of no impact if it is not planted or sowed. I read the scripture to us earlier, John chapter 12, verse 24. A life, when I am saying a seed, you can interchange it for a life. A life that is not invested in what God intends for that life is of no relevance. It's of no impact. So what is impact? Impact is influence. I said earlier that somebody in Lagos here if you go, there are three places I can reckon with that the man lived and he left his footprints there. And the footprints were negative. I'm expecting a child of God who will rise up and rewrite the history of that place. 
I remember when our church was somewhere in Mushi, Akala area. Nobody could pass that behind that church. But the moment God dropped it in our hearts that these people are human beings that are wasting away here. So we, start, we carry the gospel to them. When we started preaching the gospel, they will be puffing the smoke of Indian hemp on our face. But lo and behold, so mightily grew the word of God and the word prevailed. Even one of them became our husher in the church. Praise the name of the Lord. So you can see that life could have wasted away on the street if we did not decide to be the light of that environment and the salt of that earth. So it is the same thing that God is interested in. For every believer, a seed, you don't know how anointed you are. If you keep coming to the church and you are not thinking of the impact that Jesus wants to get out of your life, praise the name of the Lord. So there is no one who is a child of God that should live unto himself. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Now, for I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and died and gave himself for me. Praise the name of the Lord. You see a similar scripture in, Gal I mean in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. He said, And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them, and rose again. Our life is of no worth if we are not living it for him. And what gives him joy is that anytime you show up, Jesus will express himself through you. It's not a case of struggling to reveal that glory. It's a case of starting from your mind, informing yourself that my life is a life of impact. That I am created and reconciled to God for my life to add color to humanity. That consciousness alone begins to unravel before you the areas of grace that God has created you to add to humanity. Praise the name of the Lord. So for every seed that is sown, there's always a harvest. For every seed, Every life that is invested, there is always a return. Praise the name of the Lord. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. One of the things that God will begin to tell us, he said, be not deceived. God is no more. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So, if you don't sow the right thing, then definitely you will reap the wrong thing. If you sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap Corruption. So that is where the incorruptible seed become corruptible seed. Because Peter was reminding us that we were not born again of incorruptible seed. Then how will incorruptible seed find expression? When you begin to under you begin to lose understanding of the fact that the person who owns your life he has invested in you what he wants to bless humanity with. And you begin to look for what God has graced another person in the area where he has graced another person and you want to shine in that area. You find out that you'll be sowing to the flesh. And at the end of the flesh, and, and at the end of the day, frustration will kick in. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. So what are the things that you see in the minds of those who have made up their mind to live a life of impact? One of the things you understand that the success that a man achieves in this life or the impact you achieve or you make in the land of the living is predicated on what you live for and a determination to pay the price to achieve that thing. Whatever success, whatever impact that any human being will make in this life is determined by what that person lives for. And it's also a function of the price that person pays to achieve it. So anyone who had that conviction to live a life of impact, there is a price they pay. Hello? 
Let's start from our master, Jesus Christ. He could have stayed in heaven and be enjoying the glory of heaven. But he paid the price to come down to, to this earth to identify with our frailty. He suffered, paid the price. And having paid the price, he even died a horrible death on the cross to give us, to give us life. You can see examples all over. Let's come home. Our own father in the Lord, Bishop Michael Konko. He could have been enjoying the glory of banking in those days. But when he had the heavenly call, he never counted any other thing important to the heavenly call. And today you and I, we are sons and daughters unto glory by virtue of the call he answered. They come back to the woman that God has graced this ministry with, who is celebrating her 70th birthday. She could have been enjoying her life in London. But there was no form, no comeliness. She heard from God. And she turned her back on London. And today is history. If she wants to go to London, she can go anytime. She can go several times. Because for every impact you, you decide from your mind to make, God will always reward you. He said in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10, it is not unrighteous to forget our labor of love. Praise the name of the Lord. So, anyone that wants to live a life of impact, there is this understanding that they have. When God called Abraham, the first thing God announced to him in Genesis chapter 12, let's read verses 1 and 2. God made an announcement to Abraham. He said, Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Next verse. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. It does not stop at God making you great. It does not stop at God blessing you. But it continues that God will make you a blessing. My prayer for everyone under the sound of my voice, your life will be a blessing. Whenever you show up, there will be a blessing that will flow from your life to human beings. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is the intention of God. There is no man that God called to himself. You may think that the sacrifice I'm paying, there was no form, no comeliness. Abraham answered the call. Abraham attended to God. Where some of us, we had the background of idolatry, we had the background of Islamic religion, but lo and behold, when we had the call, we obeyed. And as time passes by, you begin to wonder, what will God do for me? God cannot go, you, you will not go without, he will not fail to reward you. It is not known with the God that we serve, that he will call you and not glorify himself in your life. It is not the God that we serve. Praise the name of the Lord. So what, one of the things that is uppermost in their mind is that they understand that when God blesses them, it's not the time to relax. It's the time to now say, God, you said you will bless me and make me great. Now that I have been blessed, now that I am great, then the next thing is to be a blessing. Praise the name of the Lord. The next thing is to be a blessing. So that is the consciousness in the mind of a man and a woman that understand that Jesus Christ, he came down. He could have sat down in glory in heaven, but he came down to be a blessing to you and I. So if we have received the same spirit that dwell in him, then that spirit will propel us to understand that our God, as 1038, our God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing good, healing them that were oppressed, for God was with him. Praise the name of the Lord. So, the, another thing that runs in their mind is faithfulness. Staying faithful to where God has called them. Staying faithful to where God has called them. Number one, they are convinced that they are called to be a blessing. It's not that they are only blessed. They are called to be a blessing. You may be wondering, ah, you know, most of the time when we look, when we look at life, 
we think that material things is the only blessing we receive. Do you know that the blessing of being born again is a great blessing? It's a great blessing. If you share that blessing to other people around you, that is one. That's the beginning. And it's the beginning of greatness that God wants to begin to unleash in your life. When you are conscious of the fact that having blessed me with the blessing of salvation, I must also extend it from me to another person. That is a call to the life of impact. You may not have much eloquence like Pastor B.C. has. You may not have much eloquence like other people that you may want to reckon with. You may not know much scriptures. But do you appreciate the blessing of God of being saved? Don't keep it to yourself. Don't keep it to yourself. Share it. Let the influence, you know, let the impact or the influence spread from you to another person. Praise the name of the Lord. So that is the life of impact. So the, 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 the understanding there is that a life of impact is a life of sacrifice. It's a life of sacrifice. You know, when you don't understand it as sacrifice, you always look for, for instance, now, if I want to, like people now, they will be targeting rich people to go and pray for rich people. You understand? So they are already looking for how to gain from man. But it's a sacrifice when you see down through it. You can imagine uh, they ask a, the woman of God, what would you like to do in this, your 70th birthday? She said, to make impact in other people's lives. To live a life of impact. And she did it 10 years ago, if you remember. She gathered people who are challenged by a disease that was ravaging our society. She was one of the person, the first set of human beings to tap into that before government began to you know, say, okay, we want to do this, we want to do that. Cervical cancer identifying it and treating it before it becomes a death penalty. She did it 10 years ago. And this year again, she said, okay, I want to do something of that nature, but in a greater dimension. Then tell me how God will not bless such a human being. So the same thing I'm challenging every one of us to a call to a life of impact. You may not do as big as she may be doing because grace na level with day. But the level where you day now deploy that grace. Is the more you deploy the grace, the more God increases his grace upon you. But if you fail to deploy it, that's why the Bible says in John 12:24 that if the seed abide alone, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die it abided alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. So, therein lies the sacrifice. Your resources will go into it. Your time will go into it. Your prayer will be invested into it. You can imagine, you want to go and bless people with material gifts and you are praying, let these people, let it be a blessing to them. Let them have joy in it. You invest prayer in it. Let them come to know Jesus Christ as I'm giving them these items, this investment of prayers. So in your own little corner, in your own little area of coverage, you must also be able to identify areas where God needed you to sacrifice for others. Look at Jesus Christ in Romans chapter 5. Let's read from verse 6. Romans chapter 5. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Next verse. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet, peradventure, for a good man, son will even dare to die. That is the way man operates. Man will die for somebody that is good. But Jesus Christ will locate the downtrodden, the one that is helpless, the one that is without strength, and he will give to him. Not expecting that downtrodden to give to him but heaven to reward him. So whatever we do, we do it utterly as unto the Lord, because God is our rewarder. Praise the name of the Lord. So, you must understand that it must be a commitment. 
that you will never grow weak or weary about because you don't know your due season. You don't know when God is visiting. You remember the story of Matthew chapter 25 from verse 14 to 19. The investor, the almighty God. After a long while, he came to reckon with the people that invested talent. So my prayer is that the day God will come to reckon with you, you'll be available for him. You will demonstrate faithfulness. Your commitment will be on never wavering in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Then let's look at some example in the Bible. A woman like Dorcas in the book of Acts chapter 9 on your own you can read it from verse 36 to 41 you can read the story but the woman's story is very very interesting she was a seamstress all she does is sewing and she identified that there were some widows around her and she covered their nakedness she was sewing for them she was sewing little little impact she was making in the life of this widow she never knew that this impact will restore her to life one day. So the impact you are making in someone's life, God is building it up. That was why you read in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, and you also read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13, that you should not be weary in well-doing. In verse 7 of Galatians chapter 6, he said, in due season, you will reap if you faint not. Anyone that sows a seed is always looking for harvest. Hello? So you cannot say because, you know, seed vary in their qualities. There are some that are perennial seed that once you plant them, you continue to reap from that tree year in, year out. There are some that are annual. If you plant it like maize, if you plant it in May or March, you reap in the next three months. But when you keep watering the one that is a perennial, it takes a long time before you begin to see fruit on it. So that's why the Bible will enjoin us not to be weary in well-doing. For if you faint not, you will reap. So you will not miss your harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. When the master is coming to reckon with you, you will not be missing in your place in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So this woman, all she does is identify a specific set of people around her. Maybe there were many in Joppa around that time. Or he, she, she looked at them. And she was covering their nakedness. All she could do is just to sew clothes for them. Sew clothes for them. And the moment people heard that this woman was sick and she eventually died, ah, they say, God, this kind of human being will not die. There is a way, impact that you have made will keep you alive. There is a way, the impact you have made in people's life will make them to go on, you know, prayer without ceasing for you. They went to beckon on Peter. Say, Peter, this woman is not supposed to die. This woman is not supposed to die. Even if, even if Peter had little faith because of the belief that those women had, Peter's faith was teared up. And before you know it, the woman came back to life. Praise the name of the Lord. That is one. Another case study is the woman called Deborah. Whatever Deborah did in her days, you can do it in your own days. Oh, what, what did she do? She was praying. And before you know it, she first arose as a prophetess and began to tell Barak what needed to be done. And before you know it, she said in verse, I mean, chapter 5, verse 7, that I, Deborah, I arose as a mother in Israel. Younger ones are perishing around you. You are seeing that the age, the present age, is destroying our younger people. It is then you arise 
arise and make impact in their lives. The impact you make before God made her a prophetess. What did she do? She was a prayer warrior. It is from there that God began to lead her to go and tell Barak what to do. And before you know it, she became the judge. And before you know it, she delivered Israel. You can see the progression. The progression starts from where you are. The impact, if it is only prayer you can offer, from being, pray, being a prayerful person, seeing things going around you the way they should not go, you go to seek the face of you, you don't carry tales about such things. You begin to seek the face of the Lord. How can I be a blessing in this area? And before you know it, you see God using you to rewrite the history. God will use you to make a statement in your environment. I say God will use you to make a statement in your environment. In the name of Jesus. So you see the life of Paul. Paul, he, he became, in, there was no height he did not attain in his society. But he humbled himself when he had encounter with Jesus Christ. From that moment, he said, none of these things move me. I don't even count my life dear unto myself. But the only thing that I want to do now is to fulfill the reason why this God apprehended me. I will that somebody will rise up this evening and say to himself, to herself, none of these things that are happening in our world move me. But what matter to me is that Jesus has raised me for a purpose. And he said, I will not die until the dream of God in my life becomes a reality. I will that that will be the, the desire in the heart of somebody. And the heaven will anoint you supernaturally this evening. And you will see how God will use you mightily to rewrite the story of our world. Praise the name of the Lord. So that was the testimony of Paul the Apostle. And that was how he embraced even death because of the purpose for which it was created. My prayer for you, under the sound of my voice, is that nothing will slow you down. No distraction will creep into your life and prevent you from fulfilling the destiny that God has carved out for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. How much will I say concerning Jesus Christ, our Lord? He set his eyes like a flint and embraced even the death on the cross, a gruesome death to make impact. And the impact today is indelible. The impact today is the reason why I'm in love with all these spaces that I'm seeing and the ones that are connected on the social media. The impact that Jesus Christ made is the reason why we are standing. Is the reason why we have hope. Is the reason why things are happening in your life and will come to happen because you are unstoppable. That is the impact that Jesus Christ made. How much more will I tell you of Dr. Peace Okonkwo? A, man, a woman who turned her back on this world and set her eyes to follow Jesus Christ. And today, many people can rise up and say, this woman did this for me. This woman did that for me. And that is the reason why I want us to offer prayer for this woman tonight. Let's lift her up. That this 70 years, whatever potential, talent, gifting that has been locked up for these 70 years, there will be a supernatural release. In the name of Jesus Christ, what she has not seen before, what she has not experienced before, she will come into a manifestation that even herself, she will be shocked in the name of Jesus. If a man can decide to turn her back on the beauty of this world to follow Jesus Christ, there is no limit to what Jesus Christ will do in the life of that vessel. So, I cited this example for those of us who are following after these people so that we understand that in the area where God has called these ones, we also will rise up with them to make an impact. If God has raised you to support her ministry in one way or the other, and you are still holding back, you are the one I decided to rise 
to, 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 to to read that John chapter 12 verse 24 except a corn of which fall down and die it abided alone how long will you allow the enemy to waste away your life to tell you that that thing until it is done you will not serve Jesus Christ it is not about what you will gain, gain in this world it's about the reason why he created you that matter to heaven and if you are not focused on it that was why Jesus Christ came Matthew 6 33 Say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and like every other thing shall be added unto you. As long as you are putting the cart before the horse, there will be commotion. There will not be advancement. Movement will be impaired. But the moment you put the horse to drag the cart, you will see progress. You will see movement. From tonight, your life will make progress. Your life will make impact to worship God. You can take advantage of the account details that have been displayed on the screen. Let's bring it out. Father, I want to say thank you. Lord, we are grateful to you. What you have done for us is forever. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be removed from it. You have done it, O oh God, that we may fear before you. Lord, your blessing tonight is permanent. The revelation that you have given to our heart today will work with it. We'll return all the glory unto you. In Jesus' name. as we bring the service to an end. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace.